Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how to create a vertical navigation menu or header for your Divi website. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So, without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do here is to go all the way down here to Divi. Just hover over it and click on Theme Builder. Next, you want to click here on Add Global Header. We'll click over here and then Build Global Header. This is now going to take us into the Divi Builder. And here we're going to build everything from scratch. So I'm going to click on Build from Scratch. All right, so I'm just going to close this for now because we need to go into the header and make some settings. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon. And the first thing we need to do is to go into the Design tab. So this is where we need to adjust our sizing. So I'm going to come over here. And the first thing I need to do here is to adjust my width. So my width here is going to be 300 pixels. Now, if we want this header to look beautiful on smaller devices, uh, i.e. the tablet and the phone, we, need, we also need to make our adjustments here. So I'm going to click here on this little icon here and click on the tablet. So on the tablet, we want to make this 100%. And on the phone, we're going to do the same as well. Set this to 100%. All right, so back over now to our desktop. We now need to adjust our height. So I'm going to come over here to height and set this to 100 VH. Now this is going to make our height of our menu. Now this is going to make our height pretty much fill up the whole space. Okay, so now that I have this, the next step now is to head over here to my spacing. So, so here we're going to go into the padding and set this at uh, 4VH. And on the bottom here, we're going to set this to zero pixels. And then while we're here, we might as well add our sizes for the desktop and I mean for the tablet and the smartphone. So this is going to be zero and this needs to be top and bottom. And let's just set this to zero pixels. And we're going to do the same here for the phone as well. Okay, great. So now that we have our padding all set and we've also set our height and width, the next step now is we're going to go now to the box shadow. So I'm going to come over here, click on box shadow. Now, the reason why we need to add this box shadow is because we need to separate our heading from the rest of the page. Okay, so we're going to go with this style here, the first one. And now you can see straight away we have this separation, which is great. But we're not done yet because we need to go into our vertical position. So I'm just going to scroll down here. So here we're going to set this to zero. And for the blur strength, we're going to set this to 20. And then the shadow spread strength is going to be minus 10 because right now it's a bit too much. So there we go. Now it's really subtle and it looks much, much better. Right. So finally, we're going to adjust our shadow color. So I'm going to come over here, click on this eyedropper tool. And in fact, this is the right color. So we're going to leave it as it is. Next, we're going to uh, come over here to the advanced tab and go to our position. So we want everything to be all fixed. So we're going to click here on this drop down and choose fixed. And the location here is going to be top left. So now that we have this, the next step now is to come over here to so the next step now is to come over here to the Z index and we're just going to add a very high number here. So we're just going to make sure that this is always going to be at the top. All right. So now that we've uh, added all our settings, we just need to add a bit of uh, CSS code now. So to get the CSS code, you need to go to the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. All right. So now I'm going to go to custom CSS and this CSS code needs to, needs to go in the main element. So I'm just going to paste it like that. And pretty much that's all we need to do. So now I'm going to save. So now you can see that we've created the area here where our header is going to go. Now it's time to create the vertical menu. So I'm going to come over here, click on this plus button, and we're going to go with a single column. So now that we've selected our column, before we add any modules, we're just going to go into our row settings. So I'm going to click here. And the first, the very first thing I need to do is to come over here to design sizing. And we are going to uh, say yes to use custom gutter width. Now the gutter width is the space between the columns. So we just want to make sure that there's no spaces. So I'm just going to drag this all the way down to one. And next I need to adjust my width. So I'm just going to come over here. By default, it's set to 80%. So we want this to be 100%. So we also need to set our maximum width. And here we're going to set this to 80%. 
and then we also need to go in and do the padding so i'm going to scroll all the way down here to spacing and for our padding we're going to set this at 3 vh and we're going to apply this to the bottom as well and while we're here we're also going to set our padding for the tablet and the phone so i'm going to click here on this little icon click on tablet and here it needs to be zero and for the phone it also needs to be zero so this just ensures that everything is going to look great on all devices all right so now that i've set all this we're going to now go to the border so let's head over here all the way down to our border so next i'm going to choose my border width which is going to be one pixel and now you can see our border is showing here and then i also need to add my border color so i'm going to click on the eyedropper tool and just paste my color in here now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so pretty much we're done here with the row settings. I'm going to save this and then we're going to come over here and add our menu. So I'm going to search for my menu module. And here it is. I'm going to select it. So you need to have created your menu beforehand because if you don't, then you're not going to see it here on the drop down. So mine is called main menu. So I'm going to select it and this is what's showing now okay so great so the next step now is to go in and style it and customize it but like i said it's very very important that you go in and set this up first all right so now that i've added my menu the next step now is to add my logo so i'm going to come over here to logo click here and i'm going to go to my media library and look for a logo to add so i know i've got quite a few logos here so i'm going to click on this one here and click upload so now my logo has been added so now let's head over here to the design tab click on menu so at the moment this this is left aligned we want this all centered so now you can see our logo now has gone to the top which is exactly what we want the next step now is to work on our menu font so i'm just going to come over here to menu text and we're going to change our font to nonito now this font is free so i'm just going to search for it and select it and there we go we've selected our font and the next step now is to set our color so i'm going to come over here and click on the eyedropper tool and paste my color here now as i mentioned before if you want to use the exact same colors as i'm using throughout this tutorial i will leave a link in the post in the show notes below right so i'm going to set this to 18 so we want it nice and big and then i'm going to go to my line height and set this to 2 em so now we have adequate spacing there all right so now that we have um now that we have set our menu height we also need to add our menu color line so this is for the drop down so i'm going to come over here drop down menu so let's go to our drop down menu line color we're going to click here and paste our color like that next we need our drop down menu active link, link color so i'm going to come over here paste my color so moving on at a later stage you may want to use your uh, website uh, as an e-commerce shop so we might as well just add the colors here way ahead of time so i'm just going to add my color for my shopping cart and also my icon for my search and the hamburger menu icon as well so notice that i've just added the same colors here but all these colors are colors that i've used before okay so now that i have this all set we're also going to add some padding so i'm going to scroll all the way down here and then we're going to go to spacing so here we need to add padding of 2vh and this needs to be applied both to the top and the bottom and i'm also going to go into my other devices here and we're going to set this to 10 pixels top and bottom okay that's looking great and we need to make sure it's the same for the phone as well okay great so now that i've added my padding to the top and the bottom the next step now is to add some custom css and as i mentioned before i'm going to and as i mentioned before i'm going to add it and as i mentioned before this css code can be found in the post which i'll link to in the show notes below all right so the next step now is to head over here to the advanced tab so we're going to come over here to custom css and then we're going to look for menu link and paste the css code like that now while we're here on the menu link we also need to go into the different uh, screen sizes 
So I'm going to go into the tablet and paste this code like that. And we also need to do the same for the phone. Paste it like that. Okay, so that's looking great so far. Now we need to add the CSS for the menu logo. So I am going to look for my menu logo and it's all the way down here. It's the last one. I'm going to paste this code and now pretty much we are very close to finalizing our design. All right, so the next step now is to add a CSS class. So I'm going to come all the way up here and add my CSS class. So pretty much I'm uh, done here. I am going to save this and I'm also going to add some code to do this. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and search for my code module and here it is. I'm going to select it and again the code we're going to add here can be found in the post which I'll link to in the show notes below. So this code is just going to uh, style everything and make it look much much better. So I'm going to paste the code like that. Now as you can see this has not um, really worked. That is because it is not within the style tags. So we need to add the style tags for this to work. So I'm going to come back over here and just click enter and then add my style tag. Then I'm just going to copy or cut the, uh, the closing one. Scroll all the way down here and then just add it here to the bottom. Okay, so pretty much we're done here. I'm going to save and now we have our buttons all added here. So the next step now is to add our social media icons. Now this is an optional stage. So if you want, you can add it. But um, if you don't, pretty much this is your menu. So let's go ahead and do that. So for this, we need to add a brand new row. So I cannot see here my uh, plus button to add my row. So I am going to use this navigation. So I'm going to come over here to my section and click on this plus button to add my row and we need a single column. All right. So now that I've added this, the next step now is to first of all, add my call to action button. So I'm just going to search for my button module and select it. All right. So now I can go in and stylize this button. So let's head over here to design button and activate use custom styles for button. All right. So now with that selected, the next step now is to add my button size. So Currently, it's set to 20. We're going to bring this bring this down to 18. And then we also want to set our button text color. So that's going to be white. And then we also need to set the background color for the button to really stand out. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and paste my color like that. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors uh, I'm using throughout this tutorial, I'll leave a link to the post, which will have all these colors and settings. All right. So for my button border width, I'm going to set this to zero. And also for our button alignment here, we're going to center it. So I'm going to come over here and center it. So this button text can be whatever you want. So in this case, um, I think I'm just going to say get a quote. And then I'm going to come over here to the advanced tab, click on custom CSS. And on the main element, I'm just going to add this CSS code. And this is just going to make our button have a width of 100%. All right, so I am going to save this. All right, so now that I have my button here, the next step is to add my social media follow. So I'm going to save this and then we're also going to add another row. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and search for social media follow and select it. All right, so as you can see, we have two by default here. So we can actually go in and add you know, as many as we want. So I'm going to come over here and uh, Instagram is a popular one. So I'm going to add Instagram and I'm also going to add another one. So I'm just going to go back over here, click on this plus button. And the next one I'm going to add is going to be YouTube. All right. So I think four is enough. So I'm just going to stick with that. So I'm just going to click here on this back arrow, go into design alignment and just make sure everything is centered because this way then everything is in the right order. All right. So the next step now is to come over here to icon and add my icon color just by pasting it like that. Now, as you can see, this looks really ugly on these color backgrounds. So what we need to do is to go back and then just right click and reset item styles. So once you do that, it removes the backgrounds of these icons. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And my final one here is the YouTube one. All right. So that's looking great. So the next step now is to just add 
a margin to this because this is way too close to the button. So I'm going to come over here to design and then click on spacing and add a margin of 3VH. Right, so now you can see everything is well spaced. Now I need to go in and adjust the row settings. So I'm just going to save this. Click here on this uh, gear icon and uh, design sizing. So here I am going to say yes to use custom gutter width and set this to one. And I also need to add some padding to the top. So I'm going to come over here to my spacing, add a padding of 3VH and zero to the bottom. And for my tablet and phone, I'm going to just come over here to the tablet uh, tab and set this to 10 pixels to the top. And this needs to be the same for the phone as well. Great. So as you can see, even in our preview here, everything looks great. So I'm just going to close this and I'm just going to continue on now and save the layout. So I'm going to come over here and save the layout, save one more time. So this is a quick preview of uh, what it's going to look like. But once I save everything, and I'm just going to do that right here. If we come over here now to our site, I'm just going to refresh this. And now you can see that this is our navigation. And if I scroll down, you can see it stays there in position. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.